Yo. What it do, my man, Mark? How you feeling? Man, fantastic, brother. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you answering. Look, I've been trying to catch you for a little while now. Hey, you got me today, man. What's going on? Where you from? I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, good brother. The uh, Chicago's little cousin. Nah, y'all are little cousin. That's what I said. We Chicago's little cousin. Oh, okay. I thought you said Chicago is y'all little cousin. No, no, man. I got, I got to put respect where it's due, brother. Y'all got a little war going on down there right now, man. Yeah, unfortunately, you're right. Yeah, man, be careful down there, man. It's been going on for a couple years now. It has. It's really been building. And, like, honestly, as a representative of Memphis, usually I try to steer it a different way. But, now nah, it's... um. It's real and prevalent in the streets. Sometimes, you know, the blogs can overdo it, but they might not even be doing enough at this point, for real. No, I, I know I'm right. I'm right up the way. I know after the recent events, it's going to really turn up. So, mm hmm. Yep. Uh, old boy funeral was just yesterday, I believe. If not today, but yeah, they had helicopters. Man, it's really been a war zone. So, yeah. And you from Chicago. You know how I can get it. Mm hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How can I help you today? All right, my man. So, uh, first off, like everybody else, with some sense who calls in, I want to I want to tell you that I appreciate um, all the time that you give, all the pertinent knowledge that you have to offer, and not just spewing, you know, clickbait. Um, and sometimes I laugh in your comments because people think that you go overboard or exaggerate but man you couldn't be telling more of the truth and um so i say all that to say i appreciate you um i'm coming from memphis tennessee i've been doing uh the moving game since like 2016 um but i started off on movinghelp.com no truck no equipment really you know pulling up in cars doing that moving labor um did that enough where we built up to two trucks and around the pandemic i wasn't liking the inconsistency of the moves and the team that it allowed me to secure so we got more so into the labor i mean uh into the contract game and currently i'm doing the appliance and furniture we got a couple of contracts with five trucks running five and six days a week and I'm at a point, Mark, where um, I recognize that I need to stop focusing on growing and focus on my systems and processes. Several things have brought me to that realization, but most recently I had a driver wreck one of my trucks. And um, it put me in a position where I haven't really put a lot of things on my insurance up to this point and i am honestly a little afraid of what my rates are going to look like um and to be just to get to my question roundabout um i was saying that well actually one of my insurance agents suggested that i start a new llc or not llc get a new incorporation uh ein a new mcdot just in case they didn't renew or that the rates were so outrageous that um i needed to switch over so i wanted to call you and see have you ever been in any you froze up My bad, boss. That was one of my drivers calling. But um, I was just asking, have you ever been in a position where your insurance or your claims got a little out of hand? And um, right now I've been managing them. But after this wreck, I don't know what it's going to look like. So, yeah, Grange um, dropped. Just, Grange, Grange was the first company to drop me. What what happened? Did he roof the did he roof the truck? No, nah, man, this he was coming around a curve literally five minutes from the warehouse and it was a slick morning just 
I'm sorry, man. He keeps calling. But the back end spun out and hit another car. And yeah, so he broke the back axle. Nothing was wrong with the, um, you know, the front of the truck. But the back axle on it is broken and it's in the shop as we speak. Is it a 26 footer? Yes, sir. Is your truck or is it a rental? Rental. Enterprise? Uh, Rider. Progressive is the insurance? Uh, no, CWS Insurance. They're out of uh, so, South so, Carolina. So, did they, did, they didn't drop you yet, did they? They didn't drop you, right? No, they haven't. So, who's advising you to get a new LLC? Well, she, she wasn't necessarily saying switch everything over. She was saying to create one and have that just in case something happened. Where, like what? You know, or if I if my rates got out of hand or like if somebody some, did drop. Something happened like what? I'm trying to figure um, out why this is your broker telling you this? This is an insurance agent that was out of a South Haven, Mississippi that rocked with me for a good while, but my contracts had gotten out of what she can um cover and she basically before i left her she was just you know giving me some game because i guess she liked me uh as a customer and she was saying you know just in case you get into anything these are some of the things that i've seen contractors in your position or or contractors who may have claims do in the past so so, so that was so, just so here's the thing not to cut you off accidents happen i've had accidents Never got dropped for an accident. I got dropped for a really large claim. Accidents happen. You know, I've been to Memphis. It's not like Chicago. It's more open. You know, it's not as tight. Like, we got these tight alleys and stuff like that and stuff like that. Uh, accidents happen. It's not something that... Now, if it's excessive, then yeah, but... I don't see why you would get dropped over an accident. Now, if it's a big claim, like I had a $55,000 claim. I had a guy tear off a whole dock. You know, the, the, the on and over when you back in, the clearance, he hit it and the whole thing came down. That was 55 grand. So that's a reason to get dropped. Yeah. Yeah. But when I, you know, accidents never got dropped. Okay, so can and let me get specific about the accident. So the it's man, always more. It's always more. <laughs> so so he he the back axle messed up. He ended up this is Memphis yet again. So he ended up hitting a car that was parked on the side of the road that was ended up being stolen. However, we were still held liable for that car. So I don't, so I believe she's going to say that this used car is totaled out. Um, and so, so that, that was the missing detail that there were two cars involved. Nobody else was in that car. It was abandoned. Um, but you know, I, I haven't been in this position where anybody hit anything. I've, you know, paid for brick mailboxes, um, countless floors, walls, whatnot. But you pay for them out the of pocket, time. right? Right, right. Those other ones, yeah. All right. So you had your your truck had an accident. It was an at fault accident, right? Right. How long you been paying your insurance? Two years, two and a half. And how much you pay a month? For four trucks, thirty eight. And how much was the claim? I haven't received that number yet, so I just I just got the mail on the um uh deductible so i don't have the total just yet well how much is your deductible a grand no two thousand damn you had two thousand dollar deductible yeah that's what they sent me man you you need to your comp hold on man you pay 3800 a month right yeah okay Tell them to fix it. 
That's what you got insurance for. I, basically, what I'm telling you is I don't know why that lady worrying you have to death. This is why you got insurance. Right. If you pay thirty eight hundred for the past two years, you almost paying a hundred thousand dollars. It's ninety one ninety one thousand dollars. So as long as your claim don't exceed the ninety one thousand dollars, you ain't got nothing to worry about. They still made money off of you. Right. This is why you pay your insurance. You worried about something that I wouldn't even be worried about if I was you. This is why I pay for my insurance. This is what you need to be thinking. They're going to fix my truck. They're going to total that piece of shit out because it was stolen anyway. So, you know, Big 30 and them probably had their way with that car. <laughs> Who else y'all got down? Big 30, uh, YTB. What's his name? YTB Fat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. YTB Fat, Big 30 and all them done did what they had to do. All right. And uh, yeah. if it costs 10 grand or 12 grand or 15 grand, so be it. Okay, and I'm not finna go start a whole new business because I got an insurance claim. Right. Shit happens. Now, and so if uh, it gets to a point where insurance goes through the roof for, you know, and I'm really just responding to horror stories, which is why I wanted to talk to you before I move, moved on anything. So mm -hmm. I got another contractor that uh, shares a dock with me um, for the furniture side. And he racked up so much. He has been in the business for about 15 years. Well, specifically with this one contract for about 15 years. So mm -hmm. he got into a situation last year where he had to do what we're talking about. And I don't know how much he ran up on that insurance or if he, you know, I don't know what happened, but he had to do this same situation. So that was really what made me, you know, move on it because I had the insurance agent tell me that in the past. And then this guy just had went through that situation last year. And then I got into my driver got into the wreck in January. So I won't worry with that no more because I feel pretty confident that my insurance would take care of that. But uh, what I do have you, I did want to get a little insight on, um, like a point system and cause I'm gonna tell you where I'm in and, and I'll let me know if I'm over pushing my time. But, uh, hold on, bud, hold on. I'm having, um, issues with my crew. Well, with just a couple of members of my crew and I'm trying to figure out if you one engaged in a point system or and just black man to black man, it's hard to be a black man's boss <laughs> without him feeling like he doing you a favor. And so how did you mitigate that? Or like uh, with you being, I know you had older people on your team. How did you, uh, I don't even know, man. You, you, are you did feeling you see, where I'm did you, from? Did you, did you see my episodes with my past employee, one of my past employees? Did you see those episodes? I did, I did. And so he he told you how I dealt with it. I play with their money. Yeah. Now here's the thing. Listen, I'm keeping it in a buck with you. Listen. <laughs> you you dealing with I don't know, you probably dealing with some You there? Yeah, I'm here. I I don't know what type of people you dealing with, but when you get to doing that, you know you gonna have to stand on business. No, no, no. no. What I'm what I'm saying is, when you play with people's money, that's how you get them in order. But you gonna have to stand on that. So if it ain't in you, listen to me. If it's not in you, then don't do it. Because when you do it, they gotta know that they can't play with you. So they gotta shape up and ship out. You play with somebody's money, you gotta be prepared for what comes along with that. Right. So you're not really playing with their money, but that's a form of punishment. And when I say play with that money, not pay them, but give them some time off to think about it. So when they get out of line, you know what? Take tomorrow off. Yeah. No, they call you tomorrow for the next day? No, nah, take, take that day off too. And keep doing it. Do it for about a week. 
See, when you're dealing with your own people, especially in this industry, and I've talked about this, especially those episodes with Rob, and I've talked about it before. Listen, you got to rule with an iron fist. You're not going to get respected. Our people, we the most hateful people. You know, <laughs> you know, we'll work for other ethnicities, but when we work for ourselves, we feel like, well, this person looks like me, so I'm I should be in the same position. Bullshit. Because if you were supposed to be in the same position, you would be in my position. I wouldn't be me and you wouldn't be you. You'd be me and I'd still be me, but we wouldn't be here together because you'll be me somewhere else. You see what I'm right. saying? So, so, so you got to understand what you're dealing with. So you can't run that bit. I, see, Memphis is, is kind of like Chicago, but then again, it's not. But then again, it is. So you're going to have to stand on business. You can't run it like an HR manager would run HR at, you know, Trader Joe's or some shit like that, or Whole Foods. You got to run it. You got to meet that energy with that same type of energy. It's unfortunate, but that's the only way you're going to get results. All right? And, 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 and. It's gonna turn you into a a a a a a person that you may not want to be, but if you want results, then that's what you got to do. I don't miss it. I don't miss it at all. And this is something that you're gonna to have to deal with dealing with your people, especially your people in this industry. Yeah. Because you're only gonna get a certain type of people to do this type of work. Yeah. And the type of people you get to do this type of work, even, you know, it was different then because you didn't have the, the, the you know, a lot of opportunities uh, like you do now, right? So now it's that that person that now you got, they really, you know, so you got to meet that energy. You got, you're going to have to stand on, listen, get you a, get you an enforcer. Get you an enforcer that's going to enforce the law. He's going to slap some people when some people need to get slapped. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm not bullshitting you. I'm dead ass serious. That's what. That's really what happened. My enforcer was the one who wrecked the truck, and and my whole world was rocked because he switched up on me when when I had to p apply pressure to him, and I had to get him out the way. And I I really been. Now, when you yeah, say get him out the way. He's still with us, right? No. Oh, okay. oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Gotta be careful yeah. with the words you know, get him out. There. Oh, that's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Now we can have a con okay, yeah, right. But um so that situation is what really I said, man, I need to holler at my boy because I know he done been through some things. Um and I, I really was feeling like I because of me allowing, I already knew he was a dangerous individual, but I feel like I allowed, you know, um, a poison kind of to be around, and I feel like as long as I he was you, useful you, to me, you you were too friendly with him, too friendly with him, too you were too fr friendly I with him. Never and, bite and my hand. You can't, you can't, nah, because people are gonna turn on you. Yeah. Listen, let me explain something to you. People got to know the difference between they boss, you know, they got to know the difference between uh, 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 that there's no camaraderie there. I'm your boss. Mm -hmm. We may have some jokes here, friendly conversation there, you know, you know, may shoot the breeze here and there. Christmas party. We may have some laugh. You may see a different side of me. But the same way my employees could come up here and say, man, Mark is an asshole. That's how your people need to look at you. Mm -hmm. You need to be an asshole, man. That friendly shit, they're going to turn on you. The, the yeah. day when you got to stand on business, they ain't trying to hear that shit. But if you, if you come in keeping it strictly business from the beginning, that's the only thing they know. Cause they already plotting on you anyway. 
They plotting on you already anyway. Yeah. Yeah. They gonna be I'm jealous gonna of you. They gonna be. They gonna. They gonna hate you. They gonna count your pockets. They not gonna mm-hmm. like you. They gonna worry about everything that what they need to be worried about because that's just the nature of the people. You ain't yeah. saying nothing different than what I went through. It's just you just don't know how to deal with them. And as we speak, this man double texting me. I know we think I'm ignoring his call, and I know he going out the deep end. But I mean, you need to you need to answer him. I mean, you know. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm finna highlight him. But now this is a part of the punishment. This is one of the guys that I had, you know, to get on today, cause he oh, had, so- he he called me trying to have me pick him up, and um. Pick him up. Listen, I'm telling you, this is what I'm telling you, I'm Mark. These folks done lost. I mean, and I'm going to tell you where I blew it, man. I, I hired some, you know, some folks that was friends of the family. And so they feel as though they entitled. And uh, it ended up, I had, how, I had three. I'm listening. How, how many trucks you got? Five. How many people you got working for you? Ten. Well, I mean, you know, with some temps, but the the ten are the and, main one roll out. Every and, he, day. and these ten are friends of the family, or M- well, okay, yeah, friends of mine, friends of the family, friends of the friends of the family. So like so, everybody came through somebody that we knew. So you're not answering for this guy because this is his punishment. Well, no, no, I'm not answering because I'm I'm talking to you right now, and also. He had a situation this morning where I know why he's calling me because they just got off and he's trying to apologize for what happened this morning. So I'm going to call him back. But What happened this morning? To... That's what I'm saying. So he called me to um, get a ride. He has a team member that lives an uh, exit away from him. I said, ask the team member. He didn't text me till this morning, around 4 this morning, to ask me to ask the team member. And I knew that he wasn't going to ask the team member, so I texted him back, I already did. Well, dude was already on the other side of the town because he was at old girl house. So I end up going to pick him up. So when I go pick him up, I call him about, I can't lie to you, Mark, about 15, 20 times. And I pull off, I head to the warehouse. So I get to the warehouse, I get a call from him, basically like nothing happened. And he like, where you at? I'm like, bro, I just was in front of your house. Like, do not call my phone like that, fam. Either get up here, blah, blah, blah. And um, basically, it turned into a threat on who, whether he was going to basically chalk up the whole, whether he was going to stop working at all. And one of the things is, I've already got had to get rid of three of my long-term guys recently um, because of things that I've been changing up and they didn't want to get used to the new system so this is like one of my last old guys and i've already gone through the you know the the brand new period of having new folks where my contractor i feel like i can't afford any newbies i need my veteran guys to get there on time not give me damages so i could i feel like i can't afford right now to get them out the way but um and i think that also he knows that so that's the little game that we playing right now and uh, we having a meeting on Sunday where I'm like, okay, I would rather let him go and suffer whatever consequences of having a rookie out there on the truck than allow more disrespect um, in my crew. Fire him. Yeah. Here's the thing, man. Everything you telling me I I always say because I understand what you're going through because I went through it. Moving in Final Mile, you dealing with a specific type of people. And everything that you're saying now is shit that I always talk about. So what's going to have to happen is, one, I would have never went to pick him up. You never show that you need somebody. Even if you would have had to get on the truck yourself, you don't never show no work especially this type of mentality person that you need them i'm not picking nobody up hop your ass on the bus got your uber but you probably didn't have any money Thanks. so not my problem 
the moment you go, listen, I'll never forget it. I had an employee tell me it was my responsibility to make sure that he got to work. You supposed to give us bus cards. It's your responsibility to make sure we get to work. We doing all the work and we making you rich. That's what he told me. So you want me to source the work, provide you the opportunity, pay you, and ensure you get to work so that so you want me to pay for you to get to work so that I can pay you. <laughs> I swear. I literally am going no, through that. No, no, no. So you know what I do? I said, all right. I'll call you. I'll call you. You don't show no flex. Because the moment you show flex, people are going to take advantage of you. Facts. You dealing, you dealing with, you know what you dealing with. You know what you got into when you got into it. This is what comes with this. So either you're going to deal with them or you're going to go deal with uh, Jose. Right, and I'm trying to deal with my folks. But you All right, know. but even, even if you deal with Jose, we can have those conversations too. That's only going to last a certain amount of time. So look, I had to go give me a Jibby and Yaya. I got me some Africans. I'm trying to clear clear shit. But but, but here here's the thing: when you run in this type of business, with that demographic that you're talking about, you're gonna have to stand on business. Ain't no other way. You're going to have to run it like death row. <laughs> Excuse me. You're going to have to. You're going to have to run it like death row. So the people who are good people that work really, really well, that cause you the least amount of problems, claims, and shit like that, you know, you incentivize them. You give them a reason to want to do right. But when they do wrong... You punish them. You punish them by, by giving them time off to think about it. You got to play chess. You already know these people can't go nowhere else. They need that job. You need to stand on their head. Don't let them stand on yours. Don't never let them think that you need them. The moment they realize that you need them, you, you lost. Send his ass home. And you get your ass on the truck. And then the person that you on the truck with, when they talk, man, yeah, he was on the truck. So now they know what, man, I get out here and do it myself. I don't need you. See, you don't want to get on the truck no more. I swear to God. I ain't and, and, see, and, 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 and see, that's the problem. See, I, I know. You not never finna tell me this, that, and the third about my business. I right, take your ass home. Anybody to tell you I came suited and booted every day, you would have thought that I was on the truck. Every single day I came. I'm sitting in the office, full screens, monitor, leather, sofa, everything. But I look like I'm supposed to be on the truck every day. Even with overflow. I always made sure I had overflow. Every single day I came look like I'm ready. They see this. You don't want to get on the truck. See, with me, yeah, act like act stupid if you want to. I don't need you. You need me. I'm providing you the opportunity. That's how you're supposed to talk to them. I'm giving you the opportunity. You ain't giving me shit. I was already me before I met you. Swear. You said swear, but you ain't you ain't you ain't I, showing it. But you ain't thing, showing it. I would have to I would have to live in that environment. I don't want to live in death row. I don't want to What you mean? What you mean live in I, that environment? I would I feel as though if I engage them in the way that where they are, then I will make myself a prisoner in my own business. 
versus why you say that how because i have engaged with them in a ruffian type thing and i would rather weed them out i really think that i can find a crew like like you said i know i I understand the demographic that we're dealing with and it takes a certain type of person to keep showing up to this bruiser job every day but man i'm telling you i I, i've i've gone through iterations where you know we we i'm at odds with my folks we they but i feel you know i hear you loud and clear which is why i'm on the phone with you because i know this is something that i gotta do i can't be buddy with these folks i can't care about them I, not, and, and not, no not you can sense. care about them but you not you're not you're not you can't run that business like you running uh 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 whole foods or uh, uh where it's friendly and it's you know eclectic and shit like that you walk in you got the weird people with the green hair and all that shit like that's a different type of demographic you dealing with your people in this industry and it's a certain type of your people these are the people who the world is shut out i talk about it all the time I'm glad you're up here because now people can see like, damn. So it's really like that. Yeah, uh, this is what you deal with. Uh, so, 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 so you have to get. Listen, you have to run it like death row. Like, and if you're not cut out for it, then maybe you should transition. Listen, if you want to run a moving company and deal with the type of people, you gotta run it like death row. Like literally, you gotta have it. And, and, and if it gets to the point where it gets too overwhelming and it's taking you you away from doing what you need to do. Then you need to put a, an enforcer on your payroll. Give him the title as a fleet manager, like like I did, and then let him deal with the bullshit. Let him deal with the bullshit so that you can focus on the money. Put him on the payroll. Let him crack heads, but make sure that you get an enforcer that he's not gonna have to crack too many heads because he's gonna he's there. Just the presence of that person being there is enough. So that way you can focus on running your business. And when people do get out of line, they know what they're going to have to deal with. Right. So, you know, and two, you need to get on the truck. You need to show people that, listen, this is my business. And I'm not, I'm not too shy to get my ass on the truck. Listen, if you don't want to do the work, don't worry about it. It's going to get done regardless. You there? Link is pinned to the top of the chat. Take probably one more call. Link is pinned to the top of the chat. Oh, there you go. My bad, boss. I, I finally answered for him, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you you need to get on the truck, man. You didn't get you done you done you feel like you 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 gotta show them that you'll get out on that truck. I don't know why. Have you ever done moving? what yes that's why i'm so not why? trying to get out on this truck but it's your, it's your business though listen i wasn't on the truck from 2013 to 2020 the pandemic i was forced to get back out because i just didn't have enough workers anymore well let me get my seven in mark i i just got off the truck that's what i'm all saying. right but but we in different times now Here's the thing, if 2015, 16, 14, 18, 19 would have called for me to get back out, I wouldn't have had no choice because at those years, I wasn't in the position uh, that I was in 2020. 2020, when I, I was forced to do it because of a, something that no one knew was going to happen, a pandemic. If I would have known, if I had a crystal ball and knew that was going to come and everybody was going to get rich overnight with PPP and all this other shit, I would have been more prepared i was already i was already planning my exit for 2025 anyway so it was already in the works but when that happened by the end of 2020 i said listen i'm gonna do this to the end of 2022 and i'm done but the point that i'm trying to make is after seven years of not being in the field i had to get back out in the field the mark you see today i didn't look like this i was about 20 25 pounds heavier I had a, 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 a 2009, 2010 Gucci man belly. I wasn't six pack Mark. 
I had an 09 Gucci man belly. I was the guy that it didn't matter how I looked. But I had to get back out there. Why? Because I wasn't at the point yet where I could just say to hell with it. So for 2020, 2021, and 2022, for those three years, I had to get back out on the truck with a crew. It's your business. You're not too good to get on your own. You're too good to get on your own truck. See, and and I'm, I'm not gonna go. <laughs> I'm, How old are you? How old are you? How old are you? Look, I knew you. You are no, no. twenty-eight year olds. I'm. <laughs> How old are you? I'm thirty. I'm thirty. So, so you telling me a forty-year-old man in 2020? I was forty. So 40, 41, and 42. I can hump. I can hump and you can't? This is what I'm going to say, Mark, and I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm saying that I am adopting the philosophy of working on my business and not in it. And I feel like Amen. as a personal token, it's a, it would be a badge of failure for me if I were to get back on the truck right now. Let me do you five, Mark. Let you me crazy five. as hell. You crazy as hell. Why are you giving me a see? I'm like, well, maybe I ain't gonna have to hold him accountable. You, you must, you giving me a reason to hold you accountable. What do you mean? You ain't I earned mean, it. Let me explain something to you. You don't need nothing. You don't need nothing. The universe ain't giving you it. It didn't give it to you the way it gave it to me. If you got to get back on your truck to run your business, then that's what you got to do. What you mean? You need five. You work smart and work hard. Man, it's your business. The smart thing would to be to get your ass on the truck and go get that money. You gonna let some knucklehead who ain't got a pot to piss in or window to throw it out of dictate to you. You gonna kiss his ass because you don't want to get your ass on your truck. Fuck, dude. Fuck you, dude. I don't want to hear shit you gotta say, nigga. You gonna Take it my way or the highway. If you don't like it my way, get the fuck out of here. I'm going to go put my shirt on. I'm going to go put my khakis on. I'm going to put my steel toe boots on. And I'm going to go get this money. I hear you loud and clear. You think I'm going to let somebody dictate to me how I run my business? Because he feel like I need him. Because he know I'm too... I don't know. You made too lazy, too pretty, whatever the situation is. Don't want to get on the trucks. So, so, so here's the thing. So here's the thing. They know that. They know that to the point where they got the gall. Listen, ain't nobody finna never ask me to come pick them up because they already know the answer. You're not getting your funky ass in my ride. You crazy? <laughs> The goal of him to even ask you that lets me know what he thinks of you. He don't respect you. They not gonna go at, listen. They not gonna listen. They not gonna go ask the 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 the, the, the store manager at Whole Foods if they working at Amazon. They ain't gonna ask Jeff. They not gonna ask Bill. They ain't gonna ask Warren if they working down at the uh uh, uh Trader Joe's. They not if the, the bagger ain't finna ask the, the HR manager, man. Listen, dude, I don't fuck with you like that. You a worker. Don't get this shit misconstrued. I pay you. Get you set you an Uber budget, get you a bus pass, and get to work. I've done my job. I've paid you. I've provided you work, and I've paid you. You need to find your way to work. Don't ask me to get you to work so I'm supposed to pick you up too? Fuck you think this is? This is how you're supposed to talk to them. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you don't want to work. Man, get off my phone, man. Get off, get, get cause man, listen. Ain't nobody finna I'm dictate to me. Mark. You, I, I ain't give you the full story, but I'm gonna let you cook. No, 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 no. Give me the full story, cause I might get a chance to turn the pot up uh, even higher. Well, <laughs> give me the full the story. The situation is more nuanced than. 
but but it, it, and I and I noticed your channel and I feel like everything that you're saying is valid and can fit somebody else's story more. So I don't want to invalidate it by before you tell me. Before you tell me, just answer this one question. Mm -hmm. You got a prosthetic leg or arm? Absolutely not. You got a heart condition? Now you know for sure. Well, well, you don't know. I'm not scared of work. It okay, go on. You can answer your question. No, go ahead. You can talk now. I just wanted to know. Right. So I, I'm willing and able, and I did years on the truck. And so I've also gone times where I said that I wasn't going to get back on the truck, and I got back on the truck. At this time, in this two-year mark, I've never had um, a more successful run than now. And that's after I decided no matter what, I'm about to work, focus on working on my business and not hop in it. Whether that means that I suffer more than I will suffer in the short term because I don't want to be there again. So I will make sure that I do what I need to do in the future so that I don't have to get back on the truck. Today, I had two helpers ready to take his spot. But because of the apologies that he continued, I didn't go on that part because I didn't feel it was important. But because of the callback and the apologies that he extended, I've oftentimes had p workers come back more helpful, more dedicated, more loyal after they recognize their wrongs. Not only that, I needed this specific skilled worker to come do this job today to come help finish this week out strong because we had a difficult start to the week. So in my purview, it wasn't about him. It, I didn't care whether he respected me or not. You finna come do this job and you finna help me get all green beans so that we can finish this day well. And I'ma holler at you with how I feel tomorrow. I, I, I chose to take emotions out of it. If I was emotional, then I would have fired him and then accepted somebody that was less skilled than him or hopped on the truck myself where I feel like it was a personal uh, thing for me were to not hop on the truck. So that's just a little bit more on my reasoning behind it. Not to say that I wasn't prepared to not have him on the truck or that I don't have the capabilities or um, the wherewithal to get on the truck and complete the job myself. You're a good talker. What You 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 come from a, a you, you got educated parents, a school teacher parents or something? Or you went to, what, what you meant? One of your I, parents I are educated. A family of speakers, a family of talkers. Okay. My daddy was on yeah, the radio. See, Mom was yeah. a teacher. See, I see, because I, my mother's a teacher, retired teacher. So I knew one of your parents was a teacher. You know what I'm saying? You can't fool me. All <laughs> that vernacular and shit, that sounds good, but you got to understand, my OG was a teacher too. I can talk that shit, and then I can be ghetto too. That's what makes me dangerous. I'm the best of both worlds. So you can, it sounds good, but it don't fool me. So I'm gonna go back to what I talked about. All that sounds you in my purview and all that was good. I like that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, let me tell you something. You allow him to come to work. You are willing to go above and beyond to make sure he got to work so that job got done and so that you wouldn't have to get on the truck and go do it yourself because you lacked the resources, which would be the people. And the only other alternative would have been for you to get on there. And you didn't want to do that. But that was the case this morning. That was not the case. That's why I said I did have helpers in place. They were less skilled than him. So how did so he I, end up getting there? How did he end up getting there? He got he found a way because a part of the conversation over why I was snapping on him, he his he got in his feelings and was like, bruh, you wanna fire me and you had other people come in late this week and you ain't wanna fire them. So he this, told you that this is what he said to me. See what I'm saying? I, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. That's why I didn't give pushback. But I do agree that there's a degree of disrespect or a misunderstanding on uh, authority. And but my that's why I asked, is there a point system that you implemented or but you don't let me uh, know. You so, 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 so do I, this. No, no, I had that. So you're going to get a, a contract system. And for for what tardiness? What are you talking about? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you could do a point system for tardiness. I mean, you ain't really. I'm gonna, I'm gonna but, keep it funky with you. Listen, listen to me. Hold, hold on, before That's, you could hold on one 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 thing because mm -hmm. I feel like the, my I don't have a um, separation between uh, we are uh, talking to we we snapping on each other in the parking lot. 
versus you fired. There's no in between. Like, man, I'm gonna get on you a couple times once I realize, man, I don't have any faith in you, you fired. And I feel like at this point of a revolving door, and you know the turnover can be uh, high. I'm like, maybe it's something that I'm not doing. And so I'm really trying to take my time and I have endured more disrespect than I ever have. But I feel Hit like- Hit that I like button. Hit that like button. You shouldn't be tolerating no disrespect. You paying people. You should be celebrated. Yeah. You should be celebrated, not tolerated. You should be celebrated. If people tolerating you and then when they feel like it's a convenient to disrespect you, they'll do that. You should be celebrated. All right? And you got to look at yourself like that too. It's your business. You telling me a bunch of bullshit that I really don't care to hear. It's your business. I don't care about none of that shit you talk about because don't none of it matter because at the end of the day, it's your business. If you don't care for your business, nobody else is. So that means you tell me you're willing to let a truck not go out or money not be made because you feel like you don't need to get back on the truck for whatever reason. Man, get out of here with that. Listen, ain't nobody finna talk crazy to me. You can take your ass home. I will get on the truck and do this myself. No problem. Because it's going to get done regardless. Matter of fact, if I get on the truck and go do it, that means we make more money because now I don't have to pay you. Right. See, here's the thing, guy. We can look at it two ways. Whether you're on the truck or not, see, this is how you got to talk to him. Whether you're on the truck, you got to look at it like this. Whether you're on the truck or not, I'm still going to get paid. And when you're not on a truck, if I go do it, I'm going to get paid even more. You're going to go home and you're going to, your pockets are going to be empty. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't even have a way to get here this morning. Yeah. You had to find a way here. You have to put this into perspective for people. This is the type of people that you're dealing with. So this, this is not this is not this this problem is is not going to go anywhere. It's going to be there. The morale is already down. The truck talk is already going on. Any new person that you bring into the fold is going to get corrupted from the people that are already there once they get on the truck with them. We call it truck talk. You ain't lying, man. You go hire somebody, they're going to be fresh, clean cut. They're going to be bright spirited. But as soon as you send them out after a week on the truck with them, it's over with. Man, fuck dude, man. I'll beat his ass. I'll beat his ass, man. He better run that motherfucker bread, man. Shit, fuck yeah. that us out here on this shit, man. Heavy ass shit, man. Fuck this shit, man. I'm finna quit, man. I'll get back to y'all, man. I'm finna rob that motherfucker, man. Right. Bitch ass nigga. We lost you, man. I guess that's your employee study calling. We're going to take one more. The link is pinned to the top of the chat. I'll drop it in the chat. Make sure you hit the like button. It was like 109 people in here, only 60 some likes. Let's get those likes up, please. I don't ask for much, please. Um... Somebody said hire the migrants, man. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't hire them. Not hiring no migrants. I, I I know I was talking like that, but I changed my mind on that. No. No, don't hire them. Mm -mm. We got to get them out of here. We got to get them out of here. We don't need to give them no opportunities. All right, anybody else want to come up? Uh, True Boss going to make sure the Empire going to eat regardless. Man, need to get on that truck and show them guys that the work gonna get done regardless, exactly. Exactly. All right, let's take advantage of the migrant problem. Yeah, I, I got a different I got a different perspective on the migrant situation. I, I don't want to give them any opportunities. Let them starve. No, we don't no opportunities, illegal, 
No, we can't give them work. It's people here that need to work. We got American homeless people that that's getting jumped over. No, 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 no. We gotta take care. We gotta take care of home first. Yeah, we gotta take care of home first. So no, no, don't give migrants any opportunities. Especially after that shit I saw yesterday, how they jumped that New York City police officer, and then no, 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 no. We gotta get them out of here. We gotta get them out of here. Don't give them no opportunities. Uh all right, anybody else coming up? Man, we had two people just in the car, man. They, man. It's looking rough out here, man. You know, I listen, listen. For all you 20-something-year-old Generation Z people, let, let me explain something to you before we get out of here. This is going to be my outro unless somebody else call up. Let me explain something to y'all. Because I was watching a podcast earlier. Uh, on a, uh, It was a trucker stream, and he, this trucker cussed out a Generation Z uh, trucker. Cussed his ass completely out. And I said, man, they think I, I'm mean. This dude cussed them all, called them all type of bitch-ass motherfuckers. Called him, man, he, t I might review it. Talked about this man like a dog. I'm nice. But y'all Generation Z, y'all gotta, y'all gotta step it up, man. Check it out. Y'all gotta step it up. Yo, Yo I'm only back on here because my worker did call me. But I, I know that was your work. I there and I see Axel hating ass. What's up with bro, dude? Ooh, what what happened? Axel on there hating, talking about he got four trucks, but in the pink room. Yes, I painted my daughter's room pink, fam. What's going on with you, bro? Man, don't ignore him, man. Ignore my bad, him, my... man. Right. Yeah, he, he, right. He, 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 he a troll, man. Unless he took some money from you or disrespected somebody in your family, ignore that shit. I got people mess with me. I don't care. I ignore it. I know I only respond to people that my money and my loved ones. That's it. If it ain't involving none of that shit, man, you gotta ignore that shit. Ignore Axel. Listen, fam, I'm keeping it a buck with you. Keep it a buck. Work. Listen, if your people see that you're not willing to work, man, they're gonna treat you like that. You need to show them that you're willing to do whatever you need to do. You don't need them. They need you. It's your business, man. You can either keep it building or you can let it crumble. So you, you, as the owner of the business, it's your job to meet the needs of the business. Wherever the business needs you, that's where you have to be. So if you have to let somebody go or send somebody home and the only alternative would be for you to go fulfill that route, then that's what you got to do. Trust me, 2020, 2021, 2022 was dreadful for me. After not being on a truck, how do you think I felt when the pandemic hit, everything got shut down for two weeks, while our industry was declared essential, and nobody came back to work? I only had two crews, enough to run two trucks. How do you think I felt March of 2020? I felt bad. I had to get back on the truck, not knowing what the fuck this was we were in, at that point, I'm putting myself, putting you in the mind frame of March of 2020, back on the truck, April of 2020, not knowing what the hell is going on. Streets are empty. The only thing you see on the streets is ride share drivers, the food delivery, Uber Eats, DoorDash, and trucks. It was dead. All right. By the end of 2020, I said, listen, they saying this could be three to five years. I'm going to tell you one thing. In the 2020-22, I'm done. I'm going to work, finish out 2020, 2021, 2022, in the 2022, I'm done. When the trucks started to, prices started to go up, that was, that was even better. The point I'm trying to make is I got back out there and then I had to recreate a new plan, not knowing what the hell we were in. But I didn't say, yo, well, the pan this is a pandemic and I'm only going to run one truck. I got a crew to run one truck and I got a, a, a half of a crew, two guys, but no driver. So now I got to go drive this truck. Two trucks is better than one. 
Yeah, it was rough at first, but I did what I had to do. Why? Because it's my business. It's your business. You got to do what you got to do. Now, I tell you one thing, the morale is always going to be better when your people, your troops, see that you're willing to go out and do the work and you work lo alongside the troops. They hate it, but it's a good morale boost. They hate it because now they can't do the bullshit that they do when you're not there. You got to stand on business. This is what this is what you you signed up for, and this it's not going to get any better as time goes on. You only thirty, so you still got a bunch of time. And these guys are younger than you. Yeah, yeah, even worse. You need to find some older guys. I'm trying. I yeah. So yeah, so yeah, man. You got you got to do what you got to do, man. No, not getting on the truck is not an option. If the business requires you to get on the truck, then that's what you got to do. I got you. So, so, you know. And as far as these guys is concerned, get them time off. When they mess up, take them off the schedule. Take them off the schedule. If you know that, and I understand what you're going through, help is hard to find in this industry. So, Take them off the schedule. Don't fire them. Take them off the schedule. But when you take that person off the schedule, you got to replace them with somebody. And it should be you. So now they know, don't play with me. Because you'll be sitting your black ass at the crib not making no money. Don't answer the phone for them. Or answer the phone for them and be like, yeah, call me tomorrow. Do that shit for seven days. And then when they be like, man, how many days you gonna tell me to call you, man? You playing with me. And then that's when you be like, yeah, I am playing with you. And then you tell them what you think. Tell them your thoughts. And then when they come back, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen next. Because every gangster is not a gangster until you play with their money. You're going to get that call about 10, 30, 11 at night when they really, really flat on their ass, right? And th the gangster is going to be crying. Like, I had killers call me 10, 11 o'clock at night, shedding tears. More man, no man. No one looked out for me, man. He gave me an opportunity when nobody else gave me an opportunity, man. I got to, man, you know, my baby mama calling me and my daughter, man. I need this money and nothing. Yeah, that's when you know you got them. Give them a few days, about a week, they're going to call you crying. Grown man, crying. You got the power. Why? Because you control the money. Who He who controls the money has the power. Yeah, make these, make them cry. Now, if you ain't got it in you, then I don't know what to tell you. But that's what you need to do. You looking like how the last dude was looking. I don't know. I'm giving you, no, giving I'm, you the blank stare. Hey, nice. right. man, don't <laughs> box me in, Mark. I'm trying to let you talk. Because if we go back and forth, then ain't nobody going to hear nothing. I'm hearing you loud and clear, boss. I don't box me in with other dudes. Trust me, I'm All not right. that breed. I got you. And and <laughs> I'll call you back and let you know. I ain't got where I, where I have gotten off of not uh being able to to put my foot down so i'm hearing you and i'm letting you cook and I, and I also don't care to prove to you that i got the that i got what it takes but i i respect it i didn't I say you have a text i also want to let you know that i'm not other dude and i know you feel a i know way about your generation i'm i'm really no 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 i feel I, I i feel this way because 
I'm gonna hold that. I'm gonna hold that thought. I'm not saying you that. I'm just saying if you got four or five trucks, then you clearly know something. If you don't know nothing, then you got some capital to go do it. Either way, you know something. But here's what I'm telling you. Here's what I'm telling you. If you want to have continued success, you can't be scared to do whatever is required of you because it's your responsibility to meet the needs of the business, period. Agree, and I'm gonna I'm 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 leave it at that. I'm gonna leave it at I, that. Cause you got but, all the answers. I, you know better than me. No, I don't. I that's why I didn't want to do. All right, Mark. I got you. Man. <laughs> you got the answers. No, I I mean I'm hearing you loud and clear. You ain't got the answers. All right. So you want a point system? I I a point system ain't gonna work for this type of demographic. You need them, but then you don't need them. So you got to play with that money, man. I got you. All right. Appreciate it, boss. Keep, keep, hey, keep, keep me up to date, man. I want to know how that go. I want to know nah, the first person you, you give them a week off. Huh? I say I'm going to be checking in with you for sure. I'm going to update you. I'm always checking in. All right. Appreciate it. All right, boss. All right. Later.